readers, it's Sasha, and today we are going to be doing the Booktornet All-Star Charity Challenge. So this is a challenge that I first saw done by Robbie from And His Nose Stuck in a Book. So I'll have his video linked in the description below. But the actual challenge itself was created by Rachel Marie in order to support people who have been affected by COVID-19. So basically, I just have a little like grid of different booktubers' favorites, so different like books, different authors, and I'm just going to be sharing with you guys if I've read them or why I haven't read them yet, just stuff like that. Rachel Marie is doing something incredible with this challenge. She's basically giving one euro for every video made in this hashtag up to 75 euros just in case this went crazy and she couldn't afford it. But there's also going to be a link in my description for you to watch her video. If you can't make a video or you're not a person to make videos, there's going to be a link in the description to donate as well. So it should be a fantastic challenge. So the first person is Angie Thomas. And I have not read a single Angie Thomas book. I do have The Hate You Give, which I've seen the movie and I loved the movie, so I really am looking forward to reading the book probably very soon. But I do also know that she has written another book called On the Come Up, which is very high on my TBR. I really want to read Angie Thomas. I've just literally never bothered picking up a story of hers, which I know, it's not good, but I can't help it. There are so many things on my TBR, like this just wasn't one of the ones that was top priority, but I'm trying to get it there. Next is Sarah J. Mass. So, I have read Sarah J. Mass. If anybody's seen any of my other videos, then you'll know that I have read almost the entirety of the Throne of Glass series. And I loved the first book, and then it just kind of kept going downhill further and further. Sarah J. Mass's writing is just not particularly my style. I'm not a big fan of how she decides to structure her stories and the plots of her stories. I find, for me at least with Throne of Glass, kind of got a little bit out of hand. So I don't plan on picking up any more of Sarah J Mass, but I am going to consider this a win because I did pick up like seven books. I just didn't finish all of them. Next is another author that I have read, and that is Lainey Taylor. So Lainey Taylor is very well known for her Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, as well as her Strange the Dreamer duology, which I do not have. I loved my Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I loved reading it at the time. It was high fantasy, which was something that terrified me and still kind of terrifies me, but I did really love it when I read it. I don't plan on picking up Strange the Dreamer. Lainey Taylor's writing is very, like, flowery and very, like, beautiful and just, mm, but that's not necessarily the style that I particularly love to read. So I don't plan on picking up any more of her stories at this point. So the next book is the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Shusterman. This is not a series that I have read at all. I do know that it is about this time where they've figured out how to stop death, maybe. So now they just have like these things going around like gleaning people, which is like killing them, but like when their time is up, I really don't know. I guess I missed the train for this completely. It doesn't even like appeal to me really anymore. And I love dystopia, but I don't know. It's just the thought of it and the idea of it just kind of like doesn't appeal to my interests, I guess. So I'm probably not going to pick it up, but I've heard amazing things about it. So if you're into that kind of dystopia, I totally recommend it. But it's probably not for me. So the next little prompt is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I do own the first one. I have bought, I bought this at like my local thrift store and I've wanted to read it for so long. I just have not. I believe it's like retellings of fairy tales, but like sci-fi versions, like really high tech science fiction versions. I believe this one's a retelling of Cinderella and she's like a cyborg and then her stepmother or her stepsister gets sick and then her stepmother volunteers Cinder to get researched on for like a treatment for the plague. I really don't know. I love fairy tale retellings and this definitely piques my interest and I know Marissa Meyer is pretty good at her retellings. I've heard great things about Heartless. So I do plan on reading this at some point, but I just have not yet. The next person is Victoria Schwab. And this is an author that I did not even know existed until I found booktube like two months ago. So I have um, the Savage Song, that duet on my TBR, as well as A Darker Shade of Magic. So I do intend to read those at some point in my life. They sound fantastic. And from what I've heard, she's a great author, but I've not picked up anything by her to date. 
The next person is Le Bardugo, and I have read Le Bardugo. So, Le Bardugo, I was first introduced to her as many people were with the Grishaverse trilogy. I loved the Grishaverse trilogy. I seem to be in the minority. A lot of people didn't love this story and the conclusion as much. I really loved it. From what I remember reading it, I had like the greatest time. My mom read it and she really loved it. So I love, I, why am I like the only person who loves this? But I do, I love it. I love the covers. I love the story. I love the writing. And I do have Six of Crows and King of Scars and the Ninth House on my TBR at the moment. I just have not picked them up. So I am looking forward to reading more Leigh Bardugo though because she seems like a phenomenal writer and her storytelling is so cool and she just like seems like a really badass human being. The next person is Adam Silvera and this is a person that I've really only ever heard Emma Books talking about and I've just like been on this like binge watching of different booktubers videos and Emma Books is the one that I recently finished and she talked about Adam Silvera often. I believe they were very good friends. She had like all of his books. I had never heard of him before even watching an Emma Books video, so I have not picked up any of his books yet. I would love to. I am planning on reading Histories All You Left Me, but I have an idea for a video with it, so I'm gonna try to wait and, and do a video with it and then read it at the same time. But I do plan on picking up some of his books. They are on my TBR, at least some of them, and he seems like a great author. His concepts seem very cool. They just have not been on my radar until very recently. Next is a trilogy that I have not read again, and it is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. So I have not read this trilogy. I've seen both of the Netflix movies, and I absolutely love them. My best friend and I, like, we love those like feel good, girly, cheesy rom-coms and that's exactly what To All The Boys I've Loved Before is. I do intend to read it. I It is on my TBR like many, many other books, but I just haven't read it yet. Next is a book that probably doesn't count, but I'm going to count it and that is The Bone Witch by Rinch Pecco. I did try to read this book. I had it on Audible. I didn't love it. <laughs> I was not a fan of the writing style of Rinchi Pecco. I find her writing is a lot more plot driven and not as heavy on the characters. I personally really love a good character driven story and her story seemed to be more plot driven and it was very hard to listen to the audiobook. So I am going to give myself a check because I would have finished it if I liked the story itself. So I did pick it up. This is a win for me. The next trilogy is one that I've literally only ever heard good things about, at least about the first one, and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I have not read this one either. I honestly don't really know what it's about. I think it's, I know it's about this girl named Leia who is like, just lives on the outskirts of town, I believe. And there's like a militia and it's set in like Roman times or it's like based on Roman times and her brother gets arrested and she ends up going to military school but she ends up being a spy for a rebellion type thing group maybe and she ends up meeting another soldier there who I believe is named Elias so I think that's what it is and they're like trying to like take down life I don't know I have no idea but it sounds really cool. I'm really excited to read it. I just put it on my TBR pretty recently because at first it kind of intimidated me. I'm hoping to pick it up at some point. It'll probably be another couple of years and then I'll be very behind, but it's fine. So the next book is actually The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Another book I have not read. So I ended up looking at the synopsis on Goodreads for this story and it didn't really appeal to me at all. It was just about this reporter who was chosen to write a like memoir type story for Evelyn Hugo who was like a famous Hollywood starlet and along the way she learns about Evelyn's seven different husbands and to me that did not appeal at all. I thought the cover was freaking badass but like other than that it just did not appeal to me. And then I looked at it again and I could start to see a little bit of like, okay, you know what, maybe I, maybe I could get into this. Maybe it could be a fun story. I've heard just like nothing but good things about it, at least for the most part. Like I may have heard a couple of bad things, but I think I do want to try to pick it up. The next book or series on here is The Shattering Series by Tahar Mafi. And this is another book that I own the first one. I don't own any more and I have not read it. <laughs> Shocker. I do 
think that this would appeal to me. It's about a girl who has like a fatal touch and she gets imprisoned for being a murderer and there's like plagues and stuff that are wiping out Earth as they speak. So I think she ends up being used as like a weapon or something like that. I don't know. It definitely sounds really interesting. I heard so many mixed reviews about it. So I'm not trying to like get those in my head. I know people either love it or hate it. And hopefully I'll be one of the ones who loves it because I do love a good dystopian and this type of dystopian really piques my interest. So hopefully I'm gonna love it. Next is a book series that I have literally zero intentions of ever reading and that might get me canceled. It's The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I've heard amazing things about both authors. My issue is when a story is told in mixed media formats. So The Illuminae Files is told with like documents and medical records and different like messages sent back and forth. That type of story has... It, I can never get into it like at all like I've never been able to read a story where there isn't just like basic words on a page and I know this is a beloved series on booktube but I just I have literally no interest of reading it just because I can't get into books where it's told in mixed media format it's just not for me but it is for a lot of other people so I hope that other people have loved it I've heard like literally only good things about it but I just, I can't be bothered to pick it up, so I'll just be one of the minority who never reads it. Next, I have, like, my goddess, and that is Cassandra Clare. Hold on. I'm going to get all my books. Okay. So, I have a lot of books by Cassandra Clare. I love her. I love her characterization. I love her writing. I love her plots. And I will, like, literally stand Cassandra Clare until I die, which I might suit if I don't put these down. <laughs> They're so fucking heavy. <laughs> I regret doing that. So I picked up Cassandra Clare for the first time, I believe, in 2013. And immediately just, like, fell in love with her and her stories and her writing. Kind of got off the bandwagon a little bit. Didn't pick up the Dark Artifices until last month. But I'm literally like back on board fully like I'm just I've completely like taken over ship like I am the captain now. I love it. I love her stories. I'm reading Chain of Gold like very very soon and I'm so excited like my whole body is just like Cassandra Clare. Next. The next person is Shauna McGuire and I genuinely have only ever heard of the Wayward Children series which is a novella series that she wrote so I didn't think I'd ever read anything by her but then I looked her up and she looked familiar and lo and behold she writes under a pen name, Mira Grant, and I've read this trilogy, and I loved this trilogy. It is a, like, zombie horror conspiracy trilogy. I really loved it. The second book was just like, we don't need to talk about him, but, like, the others were so good. So I have read Shauna McGuire, just not under that specific name. I've just, I've read under her pen name only. So I do plan on reading some Shauna McGuire, especially the Wayward Children series. It's on my TBR. But I'm like, yes, another one I have read. I'm not as much of a failure as I thought I was. There's gonna be so much cleaning up after this, and I don't like cleaning. We're down to the final two prompts. Are we ready? This is one that I've literally never heard of ever until this particular challenge. I've never heard a single person talk about this. And that is The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. So legit, never even heard of this, never knew it existed kind of situation. So obviously I have not read it, but it's about this like girl who aces this test that's supposed to like find like these really smart and really talented youth. And she ends up going to this really elite like military school, I believe. And she gets picked on for her gender and for the fact that she has darker skin than the rest of them and for the fact that she comes from a different class than the rest of them. She gets picked on quite a bit and she ends up figuring out she's a shaman somehow or she has like that power in her to be like a shaman. I don't really know. It definitely doesn't sound like something I would particularly love to read so I don't plan on picking it up anytime soon and I've honestly just never heard of it and my TBR is it's over 200 books at this point so I think I'm just gonna leave it. We're good. We're just gonna leave her be for now. And the last one. This is the one that everybody talks about and that I have not read yet again. And that is the Cruel Prince trilogy by Holly Black. I think it's like the folk and the air. I have no idea what it's called. It's about this like, girl and her twin sister who are taken captive and go and live in like the land of fairy when they're like seven. And now one of them, like it's 10 years later and she's like dying to fit in. So she knows in order to like gain a spot, she has to betray the prince. Like, I love a good fairy story, and I plan on reading this, and I 
genuinely love the sound of it and hope to get it very soon. However, I didn't know it existed until booktube. So I do plan on reading it. I want to read it, but it's just like, I'll read it at some point, hopefully soon, but I don't really know. So we're gonna count up the ones that I have read. So I got six out of 18, which is not good. It's definitely not a passing mark, but it's not bad either. Like I definitely did not completely destroy it like I thought I was. So everyone, that is it. I have just tried really hard to do this challenge without dying, <laughs> but whatever. Let me know in the comments below of any of the ones I haven't read if I should read them, if you really loved them. So thank you all for coming to my channel and watching this mess of a video. I cannot wait to see you on Wednesday. I've got another really sick video planned. So until next time, bye readers.